One of my favorite gear purchases of the past year, specifically for making videos, is an easy, affordable way to see what you're actually doing when you're making videos with a DSLR or mirrorless camera. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon, food photographer. Welcome to my studio. And if you're like me and you have a camera that doesn't have a flip out LCD screen, but you wanna be able to see what you're doing, well, a little on-camera monitor is a great way of getting the job done. Now, the one that I'm using is the Godox GM55 5.5 inch 4K HDMI touchscreen monitor, but there are a lot of different brands out there, so I recommend you check with your favorite retailer on their current recommendations. But what I wanna walk you through in case you're looking to purchase a monitor are some of the helpful features that come with these devices that make video creation just a whole lot easier. From accurate exposure settings to really nailing focus, these can be an absolute game changer in producing better quality videos. Now, as a qualifier, and this pertains to any kind of gear that we're talking about, is is that what's gonna work best for you largely depends on your unique needs. So like if you need a monitor for a setup that isn't moving around, like for example, when I'm filming myself for these kinds of videos, or if you have a permanently set up food filming station, well, any computer monitor or TV with an HDMI connection might be a better bet for you. Like right here, right now, I have an old computer monitor and I just connect it to my camera via HDMI and it allows me to see myself as I'm filming because there's no camera person here to make sure that I'm properly framed or in focus. And so I like a nice big screen. So if that's the case for you, then a cheap computer monitor or a TV and you might be good to go. But if you're on the move or you're on location or maybe you're in a kitchen and you're working in tight spaces, well then it's nice to have something a bit more compact that mounts to the camera. And that's where these camera monitors are super awesome. And they're also packed with some helpful features like I mentioned. And so this past year, I was looking for a new on-camera monitor because the one I'd had bit the dust and it was time for a replacement. And so I came across a lot of great reviews for this little gem, which all in costs $199 for the device, which the kit that I linked down below also came with an HDMI cable and the little hot shoe mount so you can mount the monitor to your camera, plus a sun hood, which I honestly don't really use here in the studio, it just gets in the way, but if you're working outdoors, super helpful. And then $55 for a pack of two batteries that I found on Amazon. And then there is also an optional camera control cable for $15, but honestly, I don't use it. It's a little inconsistent it's more bother than it's worth. So I just control the camera on the camera. But for less than $300 all in, which in the context of talking about gear, that feels like a really good deal. I mean, don't we love how we lose all perspective when it comes to what's affordable when we're talking camera gear. But as far as setting it up, you can connect it to the hot shoe with this little adapter here. I like this because then I can twist the monitor around in different directions so that no matter what angle I'm shooting from, if I'm in front of the camera or I'm behind the camera, reposition positioning it is super duper easy. Now, as far as mounting the camera overhead, well, that is a different video and I've got that one linked down below. And then the monitor plugs into the camera via HDMI. So we just plug it into the HDMI port on the camera and then we plug it into the camera in here on the device because we want the information flowing into the monitor. And then as far as the batteries, it's super nice to have a two pack so that as one's being used, you can be charging the other one. Now there are also dummy batteries for this so you can get constant power. But since I'm using this in more of an application of moving around, I'm looking for less restriction. So the batteries are super helpful. So then we just turn it on with this little button here on the side. And then there's a menu button up here along the top to access all of the various features inside this device. But as with any gear, there are certain features that I am more regularly using than others. So I customize the six buttons across the top, these function buttons with my own personal favorite settings, which I wanna share with you. And so the very first one, which is super helpful for gauging your exposure levels, it's called false color and we turn that on and no this isn't some sort of psychedelic trip when we turn this feature on it displays different levels of brightness as different colors and so you can see here in this bar over to the right hand side that is your guide and so anything that is red up here at the top 100 percent that's going to be things that are in the brightest area of the spectrum including things that are overexposed and then we go on down to the blues area all the way down to the magenta 
Delta, and that's representing anything that is dark, tending toward underexposed. Now, my goal from an exposure standpoint is to ensure that my subject is roughly in the gray to green range. So like that 60 up to about 80% range. And so if I start to adjust my exposure settings, making the scene brighter, you can see now how everything is turning yellows and oranges. That's telling me kind of warning, warning, you're overexposing. And sure enough, if I turn false colors off, we can see that's clearly too bright overexposed. So let's turn it back on and adjust our exposure settings back down a bit. And now we can see the majority of our subject is all in the gray. We've got some in the pinks. If I turn false color off again, you can see, ah, we're much more adequately exposed now. Now, if you are not familiar with how exposure settings work on a DSLR or mirrorless camera, I have a helpful playlist linked down below for you. But now if we turn false color back on and we start to adjust our exposure settings, a lot darker, we can see now things are starting to turn blue. We're definitely hitting those lower ends of the spectrum if we turn the false color off. Sure enough, we have underexposed this image. So this is incredibly helpful for making sure that we are right on the money as it relates to exposure for our videos. Now you might have a scene with really dynamic lighting and high contrast. So you might have, for example, the background is super dark or super bright. And so for me, it always comes back to the proper exposure for the subject and the rest, in my opinion, is up to your creative interpretation. As long as your subject is properly exposed, we can see that well, that to me is most important. So now moving on to the second feature that I really love that's nice to have close at hand here, I have on the second button, and that is the image flip. And this is more helpful if you are shooting with an overhead camera and maybe you wanna be able to flip the scene. You've just got a real quick access to do that right here. So then setting number three that I love that I have here on the third button across the top, and this is what I help to really nail focus. It's called focus assist. And so when this feature is turned on, you will see a color illuminate where the focus is resting in the image. So you can see I've turned that on. And then as I manually adjust the focus, you can see now whatever turns red, that is where my focus is resting. And so if I wanna know, is my subject properly in focus? Cause sometimes it can be really hard to see by just looking at the screen that I can tell, ah, yes, the subject, the lemons here, they have that little red outline around them. Now you can change the color of the focus assist by just going into the menu. And you can see that we have selected red right now, but we could very easily select green, blue, or yellow. Depending on your subject, it's really helpful to have a contrasting color. So next up, one of my favorite features and that I've got programmed into the fourth button is the marker mat. And these are guidelines that are super helpful if I'm gonna be cropping this video afterward, which as somebody who's creating videos for social media, a lot of times this is incredibly helpful because there's nothing more frustrating than capturing a video and then realizing something Something important is getting cropped out when making the video for a 9x16 reels or a 1x1 for a Facebook ad. And so having a quick guide that I can turn on and I can start to see exactly what is inside the lines and make sure that my compositions are fitting that to make my life easier when I crop the video. So then the next setting up is zebra stripes. And this is also helpful when it comes to exposure because anything that has zebra stripes on it is the highlights are within the range of being clipped, overexposed. So for me, I use the false color feature when I'm initially setting up my exposure, but then I turn it off so that I can see an accurate representation of what the picture looks like. But then I can turn on the zebra stripes as like an additional safety measure. Because if those start popping up, I know it might be time to adjust the exposure. And so for my lemons, I see that I do have some zebra stripes going on. Now, a lot of times we'll get them in these reflective areas like we have here on the bowl, on the edges. And I don't mind those so much because they are adding a little punch and fun to the scene and they're not distracting from our subject. I do have those some right on that primary lemon right there. So I'm gonna take my ISO and take it down just one notch to reduce those a bit. I am gonna have a little bit of specularity in certain parts of the image, those specular highlights, those shiny 
these that are direct reflections of the light, but they create that sort of dynamic punch. But again, those zebra stripes are just a helpful tool in order to appropriately gauge our exposure so that we don't have any surprises once we get into post and we start editing these videos. And then another feature that I use quite frequently, especially when I'm shooting overhead, is the grid line feature. You can see when we turn that on, we can see these grid lines overlaid our scene. This is really helpful if we are shooting something and we want to make sure that horizon line is perfectly level or when we're shooting overhead and we want to make sure everything is properly squared off that things aren't askew that's another helpful feature now some of these monitors not this one but other more expensive ones that are out there can also serve as recording devices and connect to things like solid state drives offer all sorts of other fancy features but for me as is the case with a lot of gear I love something simple easy to use and affordable and so this particular device definitely checks all those boxes but I absolutely encourage you to do your own research talk with the experts at your favorite retailers like I do for example when I call up the folks over at b &H, just so that you make sure that you are making the right investment for your own needs. But of course, as always, I'll be sure to link this gear as well as some other helpful resources down below. But thanks so much for stopping by the studio. I hope you have a fantastic day. You stay out of trouble and I'll see you soon, okay? Bye!